Dr. Dave 101. Dear paranormal enthusiasts, I'm probably going to upset you tonight because I believe there is a real travesty that is starting to happen over the last couple of years in the paranormal world. As paranormal teams have jumped up everywhere across North America and the world, we've seen a lot of greed start to happen in the paranormal field. How can there be greed in the paranormal field? Well, we're going to break it down for you. There are a number of teams out there who are hoarding locations, getting companies to sign these contracts, companies, businesses, museums, so that they are the only paranormal team who can investigate. Now, normally I wouldn't have an issue with something like this because if you're actually conducting scientific investigation of the paranormal, which literally 98% of the paranormal field isn't, then it would be okay. Why? Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to lock down a location so that way you can continually investigate there to see if you can get any commonalities with the evidence. And you don't want anybody else to tamper with the building, the people, the ghosts. A lot of businesses, I can also see, wanting maybe one team to investigate because they don't want a bunch of reckless hoodlums running around with paranormal gear who are out there to make themselves look good. Look, we have a place here in British Columbia, an old tuberculosis hospital that a number of years ago allowed a television show to go in there. They tore the place up. They wrecked it. And no longer are people allowed to investigate the paranormal there, which is too bad. So I can understand the idea that some businesses would like one team and one team only. However, this is what pisses me off about the paranormal. There is so much ego in this field right now, much like UFOs, much like cryptids. There's egos everywhere when you don't have a rule book. To lock down locations for the sake of ego that no other team can actually get in there and investigate goes absolutely against anything that could be potentially scientific. You know, I give the paranormal a hard time on this show over the years. Why? Because it's a joke for the most part. It really is. We have the team skeptic who always has to pose on the website with their arms crossed. What the hell does a paranormal team need a skeptic for? Come on. If you can't be skeptic enough to control what is right and what is wrong, you're just enjoying the ghost hunt. That's all you're doing. Number two, when you lock down a location, you could potentially be skipping out and missing out on some major evidence that could share and be shared with other teams. Because if the other teams are getting exactly what you are, that is good for the field. That is very good for the field. Because what you are doing now is you are building a case that there is commonality that is happening within the evidence. But no, it's always about ego in the paranormal field. It always is. It's rarely about anything else because teams split up over the years and one person doesn't like another or somebody wants to be the biggest and the best in whatever state or province they are and they want to be the team of the decade, the century, whatever it may be. It's ego. Why is it ego? Because we all want to be the best at something. We all want to have those bragging rights. When there are no rules and you're playing by your own, you're setting the tone. You want to lock down those locations. You want to make sure that nobody can get in there outside of you. 
but it doesn't really work that way because most of the contracts that are actually signed, if you read them, and I've seen a couple over the years, they wouldn't hold up in a court of law at all. It's a scare tactic by many paranormal teams out there that they are using in order to scare the businesses. Now, if you don't, if you let in another team, we have the right to sue you, potentially, even though you know it'll never get to that. I'm not a fan of it, okay? We always hear the paranormal people crying about, we need paranormal unity. We need cohesiveness. We need people to work together. But a lot of these people only preach that when paranormal unity goes by what they stand for. Locking down locations, whether it's a museum, a haunted house, a historical location, a restaurant, a movie theater, whatever it may be, is absolutely childish. It's childish to the paranormal field. It's disrespectful to your other investigators who are out there, maybe on other teams. And it causes a lot of anguish for absolutely no reason unless it's one thing, once again, ego. So why have the ego? 98% of the paranormal teams out there are out there for an adventure. They are out there to get spooked. They are out there to have a good time because going ghost hunting is their way of spending a great weekend together, much like some people mountain bike, some people hike, some people go to the bars and restaurants, some people go to hockey games or football games. Paranormal happens to be their thing, and that's okay. Everybody's allowed a really cool hobby, whether others agree with it or not. But the problem that we have in the paranormal is we have all of these teams out there, and you can check them out online. All you got to do is use Google and see how many of them use the word science. It is the most misused word in the entire paranormal genre, from ghost investigation to UFOs to cryptids like Bigfoot and Sasquatch and Dogman in between. This is a problem that we have in this field because 98% of the people out there investigating have not conducted a scientific experiment literally since high school. It's degrading. It's unfair. It's not good for the paranormal population. We have to do better. We really do. Who cares about the story? Who cares about the evidence? Who cares about what's truly going on? Because most people are there for themselves. Most paranormal teams are there to see what they get. They want to walk around with their fancy gear. They want to walk around in their team t-shirts and hoodies, which is great. It's fine. However, what are they doing scientifically to prove or disprove the paranormal? Most scientific experimentations have a process. You have a hypothesis, and it goes right down to conclusion. And then after that conclusion, you have usually a peer review. A peer review to look over your evidence, to look over your studies, to look over your reports, to see what you have captured. But paranormal teams don't do that. They don't do it at all. Why do they not do that? It's simple. They don't know how. They don't have a team scientist. They don't have anything going but ego. It is all ego-driven. So when you see a location locked down that you cannot attend 
because of some faux contract. You're doing more to hurt the field than you are helping it. Now, once again, I want to preface. There are businesses and museums out there who don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry ghost hunter running into their buildings. They don't. And that's fine. That is the building's choice, the museum's choice, the restaurant's choice. That's fine and dandy. But if you are actively going to locations to try and lock them down, and the only reason why you are locking them down is to screw other paranormal teams, shame on you. Everybody is allowed to have fun in this because there are very few out there trying to solve the riddles that the paranormal actually holds. Is there life after death? Can we solve crimes? Are these spirits walking among us, or are they in a different dimension? These are the questions we need to answer. These are the questions that we're not answering because we're too busy running around looking for a quick rush of being scared and spooked. So why do we do it? Well, we're thrill seekers. There's nothing wrong with ghost hunting. It's fun. I've done it numerous times, and I've enjoyed it each and every time that I have. But am I a paranormal investigator? Not even close. I am nowhere close to where Brandon Alvis or Mustafa Gadalari are. I am nowhere close to having the knowledge of a Ross Allison or a David Weatherly or a Timothy Renner. I'm nowhere close to getting a television show, nor would I want one with a face for radio. But the big thing about it is there are a lot of wannabes out there who want that opportunity, who know that that television show is not coming, that pilot is not coming. So what can they do to flex their muscles? They can lock down locations with fake contracts. And it's disgusting that the paranormal world is coming to that. That there are individuals out there so pompous that they would come to your haunted location and say, you know what? We got some goods here. We don't want anybody to tamper with it. So just sign right here. That way it makes us exclusive for you and we're going to treat you right. It's ghost hunting. Sure, it may be your passion. Sure, it may be everything you want to do in life and you would pray and give anything to do it full time. Doing it by screwing other teams, though, is not the way to go. It really isn't. Because if you screw up, you're screwing that location for every other team who wants to do it right. There's a team here in British Columbia who actually painted over a evil drawing in a museum without the museum's permission because the psychic of the team felt it was necessary to paint over it. They actually brought a can of paint to paint over potential paranormal evidence because the museum curators had no idea how this evil drawing had ended up on the walls. Who was this paranormal team to make that decision for the museum? The museum ended up booting them out. They're not allowed back there. That museum could have very well said, nope, we're not taking any more paranormal teams because of the way this one acted. But they aren't. They're more picky now. That is how much of a loose cannon the paranormal field is. And you have an opportunity to ruin it for other teams. How come you don't see the big stars, whether it's Dustin Parry, whether it's Jason Hawes, whether it's, once again, Brandon Alvis, Mustafa Gadalari, Dave Schrader, 
All right. Any of the big name stars. You don't see them locking down locations. You don't see them saying, hey, ABC Paranormal. You're not allowed here. You don't because they respect the field. And locking down locations is one way to show that you have no respect for the field or your fellow ghost hunters who want to have fun, just like you. That's your Dave 101.